Dr. Battolini, you've been giving a talk here on obesity and cancer. There's quite a few things I want to ask you about that because there is, first of all, a, a link. Can you tell me what is the link? I know there's an epidemiological link known, but what is known ab about the science of what's going on between the link of obesity and cancer? The link has been uh, clear since uh, 20 or even more years, but so far it has been unclear what are the really the players? What is the reason of this link? And so far, most of the scientists have been focusing on soluble factors, hormones, and so on. Now we have this evidence, along with some other investigators uh, that are uh, promoting this uh, small new field of uh, progenitors present in the adipose tissue, that the white adipose tissue in uh, humans is a very rich reservoir of progenitors. Uh, so far, uh, most of the attention about the progenitors has been around the bone marrow, which has been considered so far uh, a sort of unique niche and reservoir for progenitors. And we have this evidence that the white adipose tissue in men is much richer than the bone marrow as a reservoir of progenitors. These progenitors can go to the cancer to the uh, neoplasia and promote uh, cancer growth in our observations. Because progenitor cells have, by definition, a degree of proliferative vigor. Exactly. And they can become uh, uh, fibroblasts, they can they become endothelial cells, uh, they can promote uh, cancer to grow in different ways. And now we are studying, along with other people in uh, Houston uh, and in uh, Columbus, uh, how they promote the cancer growth uh, and uh, what is the single cells uh, that are promoting exactly cancer growth uh, and what are the cells that are less relevant from adipose tissue. Can you relate your cellular theories and your cellular facts to the epidemiological finding that body mass image, for instance, is related positively to the incidence of cancer? Yeah, we are finding a very good correlation with this bo body mass index in some part of the body. Um, particularly with umbilical uh, fat is extremely rich of these progenitors and in fact there are some correlations that are already finding that uh, the fat in particular uh, areas of the body is particularly detrimental for the risk of developing cancer and on having a particularly aggressive type of cancer. And are you able to distinguish between the types of cancer that could be stimulated by obesity? Yeah, uh, we are focusing on breast cancer and um, particularly in elderly person, it might be that uh, the memory uh, fat pad is extremely rich of progenitors. So these progenitors can play a local role in promoting the growth of uh, breast cancer. Now, adipose tissue is extremely important because in cosmetic surgery you can use it. You can use it in reconstructive surgery after breast cancer surgery can you not? Um, are there implications for transferring adipose tissue from one part of the body to another? As you correctly pointed out, uh, uh, adipose tissue is uh, uh, used nowadays very intensively, not only for aesthetical purposes, but also to remodel the breast after uh, the surgical removal of cancer. Now, uh, our studies and one epidemiological study that has been already accepted for publication made by uh, Professor Petit and uh, Wiesnulovic-Ratte in uh, the European Institute of Oncology is uh, uh, offering evidence that, uh, particularly for inside to cancer, the lipophilin procedure might be at risk uh, for a higher incidence of local relapse. Of course, this should be confirmed in larger studies, but uh, what we will do next, uh, along with uh, um, surgeons in our institute and uh, scientists uh, again uh, in uh, uh, Houston and Columbus, Ohio, will be to look at the single cell population that are promoting cancer growth in order to avoid to reuse them along with uh, um, progenitors that are not detrimental for cancer uh, growth. How hard are the data at the moment? Because clinicians do need guidelines and how sure are you about the level of risk of transferring adipose tissue? Um, I would say that there is no adequate uh, evidence of uh, the lipophilic lipotransfer procedure being uh, safe or unsafe. It's a field that should be intensively investigated and it's the right time to start uh, such an investigation. 
you've been talking here about this whole issue. What issues would you like to bring to the attention of clinicians then that they should focus on and remember? Well, of course, to enroll the patients in uh, controlled clinical trials. This is the only way to be sure that every single patient is offering the right information that the scientific community is in need to understand whether or not uh, this procedure is safe. And then the next step will be as soon as possible to uh, investigate what type of cells we are injecting to be able in the future to tell to the patients, okay, we are giving to you the safe cells and removing the bad cells. That would be a medium term goal, but uh, it's time to start. And uh, on the issue of body mass index and recommendations to avoid the suspected carcinogenesis, what sort of recommendations finally would you make to the general public and to doctors to give their patients about avoiding obesity? I would say that so far the strongest and maybe one of the very few extremely strong evidence is that uh, uh, the total intake of food has a, corre a correlation with cancer risk. So avoiding to eat too much is probably nowadays the safest uh, indication uh, to reduce the body mass index and to reduce the risk of cancer. And does it rate along with stopping smoking? Of course, uh, that's another very risky habit, but if you just focus on, on uh, body mass index, uh, the two things combined together are for sure to be avoided. Francesco, it's a delight to have you with us today. Thank you for those wise words and for being here with us on eCancer TV. Thanks a lot.